What's going on guys? This is going to be part two of the uh, Tahoe's front differential rebuild. I just wanted to put this little intro in here uh, just to let you know the retaining compound that I used on the two carrier bearing races, it's not required. It completely didn't occur to me at the time, but one of you guys actually commented on it. And those races are supposed to actually um, be loose inside the carrier. Because just like, you know, a rear end um, differential and like rear wheel drive car, the carrier bearings aren't actually pressed into the case. They kind of float and then you drop the whole pumpkin in that way and you set the preload um, by moving the shims left or right sit in the backlash, whatever. So those are designed to just kind of float in there. So when you turn the little um, retainers on both sides of the carrier, they'll move with the bearing and actually put more pressure on it. I did check the backlash you'll see coming up in the video and all that was good. So it didn't really matter to me. It didn't matter for me. I didn't have to actually move those adjusters, but just something to keep in mind, you don't have to get retaining compound and they are supposed to actually be floating in there. So that's what the pan looks like. Not the worst, but definitely nowhere near the best. There's a good, like, just corner layer of sludge just sitting in the bottom of the pan there, which I never would have thought looking at the top because the top end, when it, the valve cover gaskets, is absolutely immaculate. But yeah, it just means I'm gonna have to do a lot more cleaning uh, to kind of get whatever loose crap I could get out of here, get that sludge out of there. Get all the sludge off the outside, and this is the original pan gasket. You can see it's still riveted in place. Alright guys, we're back at the garage. I just finished cleaning all the oil pan bolts off, got all that thick sludge off the heads. I went underneath, I got the block nice and clean. I cleaned off uh, the side of the cross member on the driver's side the best I could, got all that sludge off of there. The oil pan is ready to go. I just cleaned it out in the parts washer. All this stuff is basically just staining. It's not like really uh, chunky sludge. So uh, whatever didn't come off, I just left it. All the thick stuff that was in the bottom of the sump there, I was able to get out. I cleaned the uh, gasket surface just with some scotch Bright and a little brake clean that got all of the uh, kicked on oil stains off really easily. And yeah, this thing looks a hell of a lot better than it did uh, just a few minutes ago. So uh, this guy's ready to go in. We got our new gasket right there. I got a new oil filter. Bolts are good, block is good. So uh, yeah, let's crawl underneath and uh, get this baby mounted up. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is put some uh, ultra gray Permatex on the, uh, you know, where the covers meet the block. And also while I was under here, I cleaned off the pickup tube best I could just to get some of that chunky stuff off. Ugh. Beautiful. All right, so I just torqued all of them to um, 18 foot-pounds. The two long ones in the back are 106 inch-pounds. I don't have an inch-pad torque wrench uh, with me right now, so I just snugged them up. So uh, we're all good to go here. I'm gonna throw the filter on, tighten the drain plug, just kind of tuck all this BS back on, get that clip back on with the harness. So for oil, I've been using this Rotella recently. I think this is like the second well, this is gonna be the third oil change that's getting this. This is a T6 5W40 diesel oil, basically. For the mileage um, and the wear protection that this offers, 
I figured it's a good idea. It's full synthetic, has a lot of good additives, and it's a little bit thicker. It's a 540 instead of a uh, 30. Oh, that's a mess. Woo, I just spilled a lot. All right, I'm gonna start it up. I don't think there's no reason not to. I mean, the front axle's just disconnected. It's not four wheel drive. Should be all right. Well, I got a service 4x4 message on the dash, for obvious reasons. Everything looks great under here. Nice and dry. Alright guys, so I just realized my mic wasn't on. But, um, it's the next day, once again. I just dropped the carrier into the diff housing. The two races were nice and dry, the retaining compound set up. It's been sitting for like 24 hours. I screwed the uh, cover on and now I'm just checking the backlash. I'm gonna put a link to the video that I used for this, the same one that I used uh, to rip this thing apart. And he shows how to do the backlash measurement on this. Now, being the whole thing is enclosed, you have to measure it from the pinion flange. So right now I just have it set up like this. And what you gotta do is after you get your measurement, you gotta divide that by two. And that's gonna be your actual reading. It's a little difficult because this stupid thing is going to move because it's like on the floor, but we should get ballpark where we want to be. What's that? 5, 10, 15. So we got 15 divided by 2. What's that? 7.5. I think the spec is 8 to 10. So 7.5, I'm happy with that. I'm not going to touch these guys. This is what would adjust the uh, backlash to move the... Uh, Pinion gear, the uh, ring gear closer or further away from the pinion. Leaving that alone, backlash is good. Right now I'm just gonna zip the case back off, put a very, very thin coating of ultra gray on there. Um, these are precisely machined parts. Normally from the factory they use like some kind of thin, almost like thread locker kind of substance to put the two together. Cause even when I pull this apart, there was basically no residue on there. So just a very, very thin coat of ultra gray on there should seal it up. Uh, and then we just gotta throw the axle shafts in, and I think that's gonna be it. We can get this thing back in. All right, now for the actual um, kind of synchronizer side with the axle and everything. We have this uh, little stubby shaft here. This goes in to the differential. Then this kind of synchro is actually what sits on this. And then our long axle engages into this. So the way this works, we have our solenoid on this side when you press the switch on the dash it's gonna kind of plunge out and engage that synchro so what happens is this collar here pretty much like a manual transmission has a spring this sits in here and then this is gonna move um, when that solenoid activates so you see that moves up and down like that uh, you're driving around two-wheel drive this is just freewheeling you put it into four, that's gonna lock onto that hub. And then uh, both front axles are gonna be locked. All right guys, so here's the situation I'm in. I can't get this damn axle housing to fully seat. Um, I pull the thing apart 
And one thing I noticed right away after looking up some videos to see other people doing this and seeing if their parts look the same as mine as far as these washers go. Um, for one thing, this is down all the way. That's it. That's all the way down. That's as far as it goes. We got the little thrust washer in there. No problem. For this side, there's this flat washer underneath with the tabs on it. Now, this thing was originally all bent up. I think from me wailing on it trying to get the axle out, it kind of pulled through and messed that up a little bit. So that was on me. I pulled this apart and this bottom kind of washer here with the tabs on it, I hammered it flat because it was all kind of, it was slightly bent up. I just kind of reshaped it so it was concave. But from what I looked up, it doesn't look like it's supposed to be concave. It's supposed to be flat. It's just like a thrust uh, washer. All right, so I pulled this apart again and here's the thrust washer that was all kind of like bent up. I flattened that out and that just sits in there like that. Now this washer that goes on top, I think I may have had it backwards. So if you look in here, there's like a, you can see kind of the wear mark where I think the retaining clip was rubbing on and there's really nothing on this side. So I think I just had this backwards. I had this like this before and I think that was causing the issue. So I'm gonna flip this like that, reinstall the axle, reinstall the clip. All right, so I'm just gonna drop this over here again. flat washer. That was it. Ah, oh, what a stupid little mistake. All right. At least I got to figure it out. I'm just going to pull this off again, put some more ultra gray on it and uh, slap it back down, torque it. And that's going to be it finally. So you can see that's disengaged. Axle spin independently of each other. And then once that's actually engaged, it's going to lock those two together. And um, that's it. We're going to have four by four. All right, that's it. Roll torque down to 34 foot-pounds. This thing's ready to go in. All right, guys. It's in. Now, if there's one, just one thing you get from this video, you know, just one thing. Pull the damn center link. This thing would not go back up. I'm laying on my back trying to get the stupid thing in. The only point I was stuck at, the front bushing here, I couldn't swing it under the bracket to get it inside of it because it was this part down here, I believe, was hitting the um, the damn center link. So I'm like, I didn't want to pull it off because I thought it was going to be a bitch to get out, but I did change um, the pitman and the idler arms recently. So I zipped those off barely any taps the thing came right down and you can see how much farther down this is it used to sit all the way up here and from there the effortlessly i mean it's still heavy as shit to do on your back but it slid right into place without an issue you can even get under here with a transmission jack and uh, with this down you could just jack this thing straight up and in there uh definitely even upon removal i would have struggled a lot less if i just pulled this stupid thing to begin with All right, guys, it's the next day. Um, right after the end of that other video, I took the thing out. Needed some time to contemplate life and figure some stuff out. Anyway, after uh, rebuilding the diff, it's doing the exact same thing. I don't know if you guys can hear it, off the gas here. Same kind of whirring 
changes with speed noise uh, that it was doing before. It's absolutely no quieter and absolutely not louder. It's literally exactly the same. Apparently the grenading diff with the gouged carrier bearing and just a shitload of metal in the case was not making any noise. So after uh, looking some stuff up, I was Googling stuff. Maybe it could be the rear end and it's echoing through the transfer case. And because I never actually pulled the cover and checked the rear end, um, I knew it could have been the transfer case because when I did the oil pump mod and did the transmission, everything in there looked immaculate. There was no metal, there was no nothing. Um, all the bearings were good. So um, I'm thinking maybe it's the preload on the pinion. Maybe it's just the gears are worn out in the front end, in the differential. Maybe it's those little axle support bearings that the kit didn't come with that I didn't replace. I'm hoping it's not them because I'm not taking the diff out again. Anyway, those bearings looked fine. I don't think it's the gearing because first of all, I didn't touch uh, the preload for the, not the preload, the, um, the backlash adjustment and the backlash was within spec. So I would think if the gears were worn out or something, it would have just a shitload of backlash. So I don't think it's that. So what I ended up doing was bringing it down to a friend's shop. We put it up on the lift put it in two-wheel drive, I closed the door, took it up to 60 miles an hour, um, no noise, nothing. So I'm like, all right, the rear end is fine. Put it in four high, same deal, and it's making all the noise. He's looking around outside, front end is completely tight, there's no play in any of the bearings. Um, left side is silent, goes over to the passenger side, loud noise, just right away we're like, it's probably a wheel bearing. So I took a screwdriver, I listened to the driver's side, dead silence, listened to the passenger side, it's making a shitload of grinding noises. So I'm heading over to AutoZone now, I'm gonna grab two front hub bearings, they're like $130 each, we're just gonna swap them out and see if that fixes the noise. I'm still like, I can't believe that the, the carrier bearing apparently wasn't making any noise at all. Um, I was sure that was the problem. And you're probably wondering, oh, well, you know, these bearings are a common problem on these trucks, and they are. Hub bearings always go bad on these things. The thing is, the ones on here are, they're freaking brand new. When I got this thing, granted I put like 20,000 miles on it so far, somebody already put hub bearings in it, because when I pulled the brakes, it had new brakes, while well, when I pulled the wheels, it had new uh, brakes, and brand new hub bearings. And look at that, just like I suspected, we even have brand new hub bearings on the front. So that's not something I'm gonna have to address. They didn't even have any rust on them yet. It looks like somebody just popped them in and then they just sold the thing or sent it off to auction. So bearings were not even on my radar. They had no reason to be. Anyway, we're gonna go get some hub bearings. We're gonna pop them in quick. Luckily, it's a quick kind of bolt-in deal, three bolts on each side, an electrical connector, and hopefully this annoying ass noise is finally gonna be gone. This thing sells a lot of meat on the brakes. I don't know what the hell what kind of brakes they put on this thing, but damn. These pads got over 20K on them. These are the uh, the new brakes that this thing came with. I don't know what pads these are. They look like they can almost be Duralast pads, but damn, that's actually impressive because I drive this thing like I drive the freaking Camaro. I never had this happen before on a low mileage bearing. Look at that. That tells you how shitty whatever they put in here was. And I mean, look at this. There's nothing even, there's no wear there. The grease still looks good. There's no like rust or dirt in here. If this was bad, you would see all the bearings would be worn down. There'd be metal in here. Looks fine. And I was able to just whack it out of its press fit with this little hammer. There's hardly any wear. You don't even really see a mark where the bearing was riding. And even the rust on the hub, it just has like a light surface rust on it. And that was one of the hardest hubs I ever had to remove from one of these things. I've had original ones that have been on there for 15 years come out easier than that. This 
So I modified the vacuum plate a little bit because uh, these always get just tore up whenever you have to kind of pry one of these stupid things out. I just cut the corners that were really bent off because I wanted to put this back on, but I didn't want it um, to cause it not to sit flat or anything. All right, so before I blast through the other side, let's see if the new brakes fit. Caliper is a little bit bigger. But do the mounting holes line up? Is this actually gonna be a bolt-on deal? That's what I wanna know. So they do bolt up and you can actually see that's where the pad is overhanging the rotor. So if we had the bigger 07 and up rotors, uh, these would fit perfectly. You can actually see how big that caliper looks uh, for the small rotor, but that's awesome. They are bolt on deal. It looks like the brake hose is actually the same. So if I actually had rotors, I could throw these on right now, but I want to clean them up first to give them a little paint job. And we will be putting these on in a future video. All right, now this is the problem side, at least the side that I heard some noise on. Hmm. No play, it's noisy as hell. All right, guys, first time on the road. Excuse the garbage, it's Friday, so I gotta go uh, bring all this stuff home to get rid of it. 35. Slowing down. Silence. Ah, finally. All right, so um, the diff wasn't making my noise which I still find just absolutely insane um, considering how much metal is in that thing. But it had to get fixed regardless. The hubs, I thought they were good. Turns out they weren't. So um, two hubs, differential rebuilt in the front. Everything sounds great. I'm gonna go online and find um, maybe a set of AC Delcos or uh, a uh, reasonably priced good brand hub. I ended up getting just Duralast. They were 130 bucks each. I hope that the fact that they were kind of so expensive means they're good. Um, I would have preferred to put an AC Delco or something in there, but that was all that was available in the time that I needed it. And it is in fact Friday, so I met the deadline of having the thing ready for the weekend. And yeah, now we're ready to go and uh, hit some more junkyards with this thing. But once again, parts are gonna be down in the description, guys. Um, now that this thing is pretty much done, all the repairs are taken care of, uh, mechanically at least for now, um, there are gonna be just a lot of Trans Am videos coming your way. And we are gonna be tuning the Camaro and uh, getting that thing finished up. So once again, guys, that's gonna do it for this one, and I'll see you in a few days.